So more on that in a minute. And welcome back. So last time um, Jeff was finishing off this spa. So here it is um, bonding in that uh, closeout section there for the route. And this is the other one because he'd already done the first one uh, in the previous video, I believe, or the one before. And uh, there's the closeout there for uh, where the radius where it transitions there to the winglet. So he's got that bonded in. And uh, next thing on that one is just to prep all the flanges ready to be bonded into the wing itself. And here are the wing fences that Jeff was laying up last time. And he's actually looked at how they came out and decided they need to be a little bit thicker. So he's actually um, in the process there, or you'll see in a little bit, he adds up some more layers on there just to make them stronger. And that's the uh, lid there for the center console. So that one's ready to go off uh, to the upholsterer. And here Jeff and Devin are laying the carbon fiber down over those armrests, um, over the foam blanks that I milled there to create those and just a few layers over there. They're pretty strong, um, these ones, they need to be sort of fairly strong, but anyway, nothing too complicated uh, doing that. And in between me working on the doors, I managed to assemble this um, fixture here with a bit of help from Dan and got the skins, first couple of skins just sitting in there. and. Uh, you know, I had to um, screw the fixture itself to the frame and the other one for the winglet's just sitting there right now and clamped on because we want to make sure we've got the alignment right, but that's uh, starting to sort of take shape. And there's the armrests all completed and under a vacuum bag. So those are, uh, well, the first stage of those are done. They still need to have some hard points and stuff put in and you'll see that um, finished out in a little bit. And I'm moving along a little bit further now, so um, Jeff um, started to sort of get involved here as well. And we got the spa put in place there, and he's actually trimmed off the ends of um, the wings here, and he's got them clecoed together there where the wing meets the winglet, and you'll see there's a sort of flange there um, where it gets closed out. So the spa's sort of sitting in there fairly nicely now, and, uh, and basically where it's going to live. So it's just moving along again slowly, but the jig is, seems to be working out nicely. So there's more to come on that um, in the next episode that you'll see. And so uh, here's the armrest again and what Jeff's done. He's actually just bonded like another layer of carbon on the backside now. But before he did that, he sort of embedded um, some hard points in there. And this is one of those wing fences now with the extra layup done on it. So I didn't get any video of the process happening, but basically it's it's almost like twice as thick now so it'll be super strong and it's not going to get damaged if it gets bumped or someone grabs it or whatever and there's uh, the armrest now all finished off and trimmed off around the edges so you can see there's the closeout on the back side there so all we have to do is sort of drill some holes in there there and then on the other end and maybe even one in the middle as well and we've got a way to mount those so they'll go up to um, the upholsterer as well and uh, Devin's been working on uh, prepping these uh, spars now for bonding in, so he had to rough up the edges there. And Dan's been working on pulling um, cables and stuff through, so um, and all the other stuff involved there at the back in preparation for you know getting the uh, firewall bonded into place. So he's got battery cables and stuff coming through as well now. And he's looking from the nose here. You can see where he's got the battery cables running and one of the AC hoses for the air conditioning as well. And we'll be pulling heater hoses and stuff through there soon enough. And by the end of the week there, Devin had made quite a bit of uh, progress on getting these spars sorted out because, you know, sanding all those flanges off there. So, see this one is almost done on the top side there. Just got the last bit to do on the winglet. And then uh, I believe the other side, yeah, that's still shiny, so that needs to be done. Um, and then uh, you see the other one's already been done. That's fully done. So it's sitting in there, almost ready to be bonded into place, actually. Okay, so on to the pressurization after finishing, you know, sealing the doors up and getting them back on and putting the door seals around the uh, outside edge again and getting everything prepped. The first thing I wanted to do again was a vacuum test and because, uh, you know, I can get inside and see any leaks coming through. I just wanted to see, um, you know, if we still had some leaks and I suspected that we probably would. And so I jumped inside and uh, Dan got the vacuum um, all engaged. So I got my little squirt bottle there and started uh, testing various different things that I'd sealed up. So these um, door pins there, I'd put some neoprene seals on those because um, before I had O-rings on them, they weren't sealing very well. And down in the corner there, um, at the bottom of the parachute strap, we had a bolt that was leaking there before. 
and we also had um, these uh, one of the pass-throughs there for the AC system was leaking and uh, also to the ones where the brake lines and the and the gear dump uh, lines were going through those never actually got any sealant so I'd sealed those up since last time uh, so I was testing all those and uh, I found um, a couple of leaks there one that that bolt in the corner there um, that I'm just spraying there right now that had some uh, silicon around that and uh, as you can see here it uh, was leaking a little bit you can see the bubble there and so we just put a little bit more silicon on that uh, right after this and that fixed that problem and uh, then uh, around the doors there um, we had just put some um, tacky tape over the, the holes, the access holes that allow you to get to the bolts um, or the little uh, allen bolts that keep the door handling um, bolted on those um, those were leaking so we've actually had to fix that up um, but yeah, these ones here that got sealed up all those were sealed now, they weren't leaking at all and um, yeah, so here here's where the neoprene seals are in the top and the bottom there where I'm spraying that and that, that um, I think there was a tiny leak on there but really nothing to worry about and there where we've got that green tacky tape on there, you can see that's leaking. So we redid that um, before we actually um, did the pressure thing. But I still wasn't super happy because it's quite a big hole, um, almost a quarter inch hole that that was covering. Um, so anyway, I got uh, all those basically sealed up and sorted out. So it was time to start the pressure test and we got the new uh, sensor now that reads from zero. So it's just reading um, the pressure differential from outside to inside. So that one's all hooked up and set up with the ECU. And so the door's got the door shut again now and just go in here to pump up the door seal. Um, you gotta actually close the valve first before it works, stupid. <laughs> so yeah, pumped up that one and that, that's actually operating the seal on the other side of the aircraft. And the other door seal has been operated from inside the aircraft. Um, so anyway, I got that all sealed up now and uh, time to start uh, cranking up the pressure. So Dan's on the controls there and he has a valve um, that he can basically open up the regular ball valve but then he also has a flow valve in the mix as well that he can uh, use to adjust the, the rate of flow. And uh, so here you can see it's just sort of idling there at point one which is kind of like just the error for reading there. It's pretty much zero and now he's uh, cranking it up. So there point two, point three. And uh, you know we know we'd taken it up to 1.5 before, so we weren't worried about that. So there it is at 1.5 again, and just uh, moving up. And we were just you know listening for leaks and stuff, and we had you know still had some small leaks. The parachute straps were still leaking a little bit, but kind of minor, um, and nothing really you know to be concerned about in terms of you know how much it was leaking. And then you can see that one's showing 1.4, and the other one's showing 1.5. Um, I kind of tend to trust the sensor more the ECU one um, but looking here in the nose compartment there you can see that parachute strap thing where I'd sealed the bolt on the other side is still leaking there which is kind of bizarre um, I'm pretty sure it's coming through the same spot but anyway it's such a minor leak um, compared to the amount of air going in there it's really not a worry and this one I believe yeah when I screwed that one yeah that had a leak on it as well and again, you know, all aircraft that are being pressurized have uh, some form of leak and you need a little bit, you know, in order to turn the cabin over and get fresh air. So here we're going a little bit higher now after we let it sit there at one and a half for a little bit and um, decided to sort of bring it up to two and, and then, um, you know, just let it stabilize. And ultimately we decided we got, we got it to two and said, oh, it's time to fill it up, the cabin up with a bunch of foam and that so it doesn't have quite as much air in it. So if it did explode for some reason... Um, it wouldn't be sort of, you know, such a, um, a dramatic event because there would be less air in there to expand all of a sudden. So we got as much foam as we had left over, the small pieces that we could fit in there and um, started sort of round two of testing because we didn't have any major leaks and it was very easy to bring the, the pressure up and when you turned off the thing, the bleed down was very, very slow. Um, so anyway, we got basically filled up with foam there and... Uh, going for the next round of uh, testing here and so Dan started bringing it up again and now that we'd been to two already um, Dan wasn't that afraid to sort of fairly quickly bring it up again to two as you can see and I've got the graph there adjusted at the bottom there so you can see that sort of ramping up there as well because I had before the scale was still set to I think between 14 and 20 but now I got it set 
from 0 to 6. So there you can see it sort of moving up. 1.8 there already, no problems. And so, uh, you know, as it's coming up there, um, I take the occasional sort of walk around and see if I can hear any leaks that are new or whatever. Um, and of course, you know, we're both basically standing behind there in case something blows up. And I walk out here fairly quickly. <laughs> and uh, we didn't actually hear any creaks or groans at this point. Um, everything was just very quiet. And uh, the you know little minor leaks that are happening, you can't even hear those. The ones in the parachute strap area, they they don't make any sound. Uh, so there we are at point two point three now, and uh, still moving up. And so we sort of you know took it to uh, you know every sort of half um, psi, and then let it stabilize for a little bit, and then check to see if we had anything that uh, tapes blowing around there because of the fan that's um off behind us there blowing cool air because it, again it was super hot in the shop um, yesterday. I think it was 90 something, 95 or something again. So um, all trying to stay cool while we're doing this. And uh, yeah, just sort of hiding out behind there and uh, listening for creaks and groans, and uh, but nothing at this point. So I take another walk around and uh, have a look to see if there's any um, more leaks. And as you can see, I've put some metal tape over that door handle because um, it turns out that those bits of green tacky tape there had pulled through um, when we got to about uh, 2.2 or something like that. Um, so anyway, in the next iteration, um, we took that off and we fixed those um, bits of tacky tape, put some a little strip of carbon fiber in there, and then this one had, had basically gone out as well. It was leaking through there, and so we got to a point, you know, where we're like, all right, let's stop and we'll fix that, and then we'll go and um, and you know have another run again uh, in order to make sure you know we're not sort of just wasting or, or losing too much pressure out through these larger holes so uh, but overall everything was going pretty good at this point and now you can see we're starting to just push right into 3 psi and at this point um, things were still moving nicely we heard a couple of little um, noises and really what they sounded like was just um, the door pins sort of sliding in their sleeves as the because the fuselage is expanding and the doors are sort of staying in the same place and so the door frame is getting a bit larger and so every now and then and when I would say every now and then I think we heard maybe three different times in during the whole afternoon where yeah. we heard like a little creak that sounded like the door pin just sort of moving sliding a little bit in one of the sleeves um, but you didn't hear any other nasty creaks or groans or anything like that it was actually amazing how quiet it was um, so uh, yeah, we were thinking, oh, this is good. We're moving up nicely, not having any real issues or anything like that. Um, the small leaks we had weren't causing any uh, real problems. Uh, but anyway, we got to a point here um, where at 3.2 psi, the front uh, seals on the left, on sorry, on the right side door, um, actually on the left side door there, they'd actually um, kind of separated a little bit because of the expansion of the fuselage and it started to leak air um, in, you know, in quite a, a big way to the point where we didn't, you know, we weren't holding enough pressure that we could keep pressurizing it. So we basically topped out at about 3.2 um, PSI. And uh, so the next step was uh, to see if we could solve that problem, you know, so we opened up the cabin again and, and uh, just cleaned up around where that seal was and just put it in a better a better location and uh, you wiped it all with alcohol and stuff because we thought you know if it was dusty or whatever it would be leaking and so right here where I'm rubbing my hand there was air coming out there and um, it was sort of kind of in a, in a large general area of about sort of three or four inches so the seal had basically the, the door had expanded enough where the seal wasn't pushing tight enough against both sides and it allowed the air to break through so anyway um, after sorting that out we decided it was time to have another another go at it and um, this is how we progressed from there and so this is on the new run now and already up to 2.8 and uh, Dan's not shy he's just basically bringing it up fairly quickly there to where we'd been before which was the 3.2 and uh, again just listening for any noises or any new leaks and that those uh, when the door seal went out there it was pretty loud as you could hear in that previous clip there um, so it's pretty easy to hear when that's happening although we both had hearing protection on in case the whole thing blew up uh, so there you see we're at 3.44 already and uh, moving up quite quickly there and uh, everything was um, holding well 
didn't seem to have, you know, weren't really hearing any creaks or groans or anything like that. And uh, the seals were holding on the door where we'd cleaned it up. Uh, so we just sort of kept um, kept on pushing through. Yeah, that leak hasn't come out yet, so that's good. We fixed it somewhat. Well, that shows that it was the door seal and not the And as you can see, they're already at 3.73, 7.4, and moving up. So, you know, the target goal for the fuselage is to try and get to 5.5 is where we really want to be because that will give us an 8,000 foot cabin at uh, 25,000 feet and uh, Mark had uh, told us there that the fuselage could be expected to expand by as much as half an inch I believe in length so you can imagine the door frames getting larger and uh, the doors would probably be expanding a little bit but you know overall um, things turning into a big balloon and just wanting to stretch out and that's why that door seal had given given way in the first place because those the gaps between the the inner frame and the outer frame were actually getting larger as the whole thing was expanding and as you can see there now we've crossed into the four psi territory and still sort of climbing up there um, with no sign of any leaks at this point still and no real creaking so starting to feel pretty confident here that we've got this in the bag um, anyway so just kept uh, on slowly bringing it up and as you can see there, made up now, what are we, four, still 407, 408, just slowly climbing up there. And then Dan's still got more um, flow that he can sort of dial in there to keep going, you know, to handle, um, you know, the increase in, in the leakage. Um, you know, because as you increase the pressure, the leak um, ends up being a little bit more, takes a little bit more pressure to drive it. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can see it, but Jeff's over there hiding behind the black toolbox there in the background there. And he's just uh, waving there, <laughs> just in case it goes off. But anyway, at this point, um, all of a sudden we heard leaks there coming, pretty large leaks there coming from the front of both of the doors. So the seals had sort of, um, you know, given way because of the expansion of the fuselage. And uh, I didn't actually get any video of it because I didn't want to stand around there too long, but... Um, the door gap had increased a lot and so we're at the point here where you see 4.32 was the maximum we got to and uh, because of the leak there uh, we couldn't take it any higher than that so our goal now is to actually get some uh, some double sided uh, neoprene tape and put it there where those seals are to sort of increase uh, or the tightness of those seals and uh, have another go and see if we can get it up to five and a half so I uh, hope I didn't uh, scare too many of you with my uh, opening title, but anyway, it was good fun. And uh, yeah, a success all around, and so far at least anyway, so we're able to pressurize uh, the cabin uh, to 4.3 PSI so far. Anyway, that's our uh, video for this week, and uh, thanks again for watching.